Now to the growing uncommitted campaign in Michigan that caught many off guard, including the White House. You might remember in February, just over 101,000 Democratic primary votes came in uncommitted. And since then, the movement has expanded from being Arab and Muslim American centric to people from all walks of life. 7 News Detroit reporter Faraz Javid is talking to the group about what's next and a political science professor about how this could impact the race for the White House. It's two options. You either become desensitized and do nothing, or you become enraged and do something. Mikhail Goodman, Lexi Zidane, and Joshua Feinstein are some of the key members of the uncommitted movement. You're talking about a generational movement. A campaign that rang in more than 100,000 Democratic uncommitted votes in the key swing state of Michigan during the February primary. We actually turned 42% of unlikely and non-likely voters to the polls, which is unheard of. Was that a pleasant surprise for you guys? We we could tell going into those final days that we were on to something special. While President Biden won the state with more than 618,000 votes, Oakland University political science professor Dave Dulio says the Biden camp is worried because in 2020, the president won Michigan by only 154,000 votes. I think it was successful without a doubt. Was it a rude awakening for President Biden? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, again, that is a tranche of votes that could end up determining the outcome, actually, in a state that's going to be as close as Michigan. For comparison, when President Obama ran for re-election in 2012, he faced about 21,000 uncommitted voters in Michigan's primary. But this election cycle, in a state with a heavy Arab and Muslim American presence, along with liberals, <laughs> Their anger is directed more towards Biden's support of an Israeli offensive in Gaza, which has left over 35,000 Palestinians killed since October. 120 plus spontaneous university encampments being set up is not actually a blip or is not a specific one group. It's not just crowds of Muslim American students who are at these encampments. It's a lot of white, young people, a lot of black and brown people. Just like this group, Mikkel is African American, Lexis is Palestinian Christian American, and Joshua is Jewish American and a former Zionist. Is there a part of you guys that feel that if your voices are not heard now, it'll never be heard. One of my deeper fears is, is that after there is nothing left to claim, nothing left to fix, will the world be like, oh, we, we actually recognize that, that, we, that we were in the wrong. Come November, what are you guys strategizing towards? We're not thinking about come November, we're thinking about August 6th and doing everything every day to lead up to that down ballot races. We're making the statement at the top of the ticket. Now that we have people's, people's attention, get them involved to get at the state rep level, to get at the U.S. Congress level, at the U.S. Senate level, so that we can have people represent the people. 80% of Democrats calling for a ceasefire and only 4% of Congress like agreeing with their constituents. And so as much as Biden is the leader and is calling shots, like Congress is still responsible for what is happening in, in Palestine. We want justice, you say how? The uncommitted campaign, abandoned Biden campaign, all these things, how much is it really benefiting Trump? It's not like those folks are going to go and vote for Trump. But any vote that doesn't go to Biden is a benefit for Trump. Come November, how do you see this whole thing playing out? It, I think Michigan is going to come down to the wire. And I think Michigan is a state that is absolutely critical for Joe Biden's path to 270 electoral votes. A recent Harvard-Harris poll shows Democrats overall support Biden's handling of the Israel-Hamas conflict. But Professor Dulio says for Biden, the balancing act is going to be tough. He may end up alienating both sides. When people come and say, you guys are Americans, you guys should be focusing on issues that are impacting Americans here, how do you answer that? Our foreign policy directly impacts our domestic policy. Our largest budget is our military budget. Exactly. And when we want to up our military budget and increase our military budget, the first things we cut from is healthcare and education. And healthcare and education plagues uh, brown and black communities across this country. Now, as the Middle East conflict continues and less than seven months away from the U.S. presidential election, Professor Dulio says it's too early to tell which direction the votes will go. In Dearborn, I'm Faraz Javed, 7 News Detroit. Okay, Faraz, thank you.